Welcome back folks to Hankster's Hot Rods here in our Homer City, Pennsylvania location. I am John Oaks and we are going to go over this new addition to our inventory with you today. Uh, again, it's kind of really nice to have a car like this, a Mopar um, and a 1970 Dodge Challenger and a convertible and a 426 Hemi all to boot. So again, very nice car here. We're gonna go ahead and begin our walk around, but right before I do, I'm just gonna go over just uh, kind of the basics here with you, and then we will start that walk around. So again, 70 Dodge Challenger, obviously you can see it is a convertible power top. So really nice feature there. Um, you've got the orange exterior, obviously, with the black RT striping on the car as well. Um, as far as the wheels and the tires go on this vehicle, um, kind of a traditional looking yet more modern uh, kind of twist to the car here. We've got a set of Scott Drake Legendary. These are the aluminum Magnum 500 style wheels here on this car. Now this particular uh, set of wheels here, these are 15 sevens on the front, 15 eights of course out on the back just for a little bit wider wheel there. And then we did go with the BF Goodrich Radial TAs, a very nice popular tire for these classics, a 225 6015 on the front, and then on the back we went with a 245 6015 there. Uh, as far as the drive line goes on this particular car, yes, exactly what I said there at the beginning of the video, it is in fact a 426 Hemi, uh, and when we get to the front of this car and we open that hood up, we will uh, take a look at that motor and go over the stuff that we see on that also. Uh, it's got the 727 Torque Flight automatic transmission along with the Mopar eight and three quarter inch rear. It is the shore grip rear with a 350 gear ratio on it. Uh, it is power steering, it is manual brake. However, though, it is disc up front drums on the rear. So that's kind of the basics about the car, kind of the, uh, the bones of it. So we're gonna go ahead and do our walk around now go over each and everything here as I walk around the car. Hopefully we answer a lot of those questions that you might have. Um, but if not, again, I'll always remind you to go to our website, check out all the details about the car right there. So 70 Dodge Challenger, the orange exterior with the black striping, the black RT striping. On the sides of our car, we have our bright work, the wheel lip moldings here on the car. So again, these are all in nice shape. No dents or dings, polished up really nice and all attached good and secure. We've already been over those wheels and tires. Those things are in great shape on this vehicle. Uh, badging we have, we've got the Challenger badges here on the front fenders along with, like I said, that RT striping there. As far as the doors go, again, we always check our door gaps here to the front as well as to the back side of the door. Very, very uniform front to back on this car. Elevate with the quarters and the fenders are all right on and again all of your body lines all line up with one another here. This car does have the dual body colored mirrors on it. Your driver's side mirror of course is going to be a remote adjust mirror so you've got the little stick inside on the door that you can go ahead and adjust that. Uh, the paint condition on the mirrors is very good as well as the glass in those mirrors as well. The rest of our bright work on this car, um, I mean bumpers and so forth, we'll get to those, but as far as uh, things like the trim around the windows and so forth, that is all very nice. No pitting on any of this trim over here, all nice and straight, so that all looks good here even on your quarter window. And again, the glass in this side here, it is slightly tinted uh, and there's no chips or cracks anywhere in the glass, so all of that is good. Door handle finish is all in very nice shape. No pitting around here. And again, your actual handles kind of look like the brushed aluminum effect back there. But again, those are all in really nice shape. Let's open our door up and take a look at our interior here real quick. 
So what we'll find in here is an all black vinyl interior, bucket seats up front. You've got seat belts uh, both to the front and to the back seats as well. Again, this is an automatic car, so you'll notice the full length center console with the wood grain trim, the automatic floor shifter there. Also, if you look at the dash, you've got the matching wood grain trim up there with the rally gauge pack. Um, you've got the factory style radiator, uh, radio, not not radiator radio there in the the uh, center there of the dash just below your gauges and again the dash pad itself is in great condition uh, carpeting no rips tears or fading same thing with the seat upholstery that all looks very very nice as well even the door panels on this car here look to be in really good shape you don't see any scratches in any of the finish you've got the wood grain trim here all of your bright work and so forth as far as your window cranks and such that all looks good um, so again no no issues here whatsoever and again as I mentioned that convertible top it is a power top so again you'll be able to power that up and down makes it real nice and easy for you along with that power top also when you do decide to put it down we do have the parade boot for that particular top so again it's going to give it a nice finished off look we'll close this up and we'll continue around the car here. So again, all of your panels nice and straight, all the body, you know, the panels and so forth, fit and finish on the car is very, very nice. Uh, as far as this convertible top goes, I do want to point out the rear window in this is actually glass. So you don't have the plastic back here that gets sometimes real hazy and hard to see out of. You actually have glass back here and it is in great condition. As far as the trunk lid on the car goes well the trunk fits really really nice gaps and elevations all the way around on the trunk super super nice fit here and of course you do see we do have that trunk wing back here as well if we look over here at the bottom corner of the trunk we can also see we've got our challenger badging along with the rt badging back here as well all of your trim work along the trunk and along the tail panel including the rear bumper and bumper ets all look very very good no pitting there um, no scratches no dents whatsoever in the finish of those everything looks nice even your tail light lenses here all look to be in good shape no chips no cracks in any of that and of course in your backup light right here you do have the dodge badging there as well down below our rear lower valance painted the same color as the car that nice orange and if you look down below that also you'll see the very ending to our our exhaust system those very nice sought off sought after box tips to finish off the uh, exhaust now we'll go ahead and use our key here we're gonna go inside the trunk take a look at the condition of everything there so let's go ahead and open this up the key does work the lock the trunk hinges and spring all functioning as they should holding the trunk lid up on its own you can see the uh, underside of the trunk lid done the same color as the exterior of the car you've got the mounts here underneath the trunk lid for that rear wing those are all very nice hardware is in great shape there you've got your jack and spare tire instructions up here on your trunk lid uh, and also uh, to go along with those instructions you do in fact have the space saver rear spare tire you've got the tire inflator bottle down there with the hold downs and everything and the base for your jack which again you do have the jack and the lug wrench down here as well nice trunk mat in here with a full set of floor mats front and rear with the challenger rt embroidered on those front floor mats and all of your weather stripping around the trunk is in great shape no rips or tears all securely anchored to the car and again it meets right together in the center all of your rain gutters or your water channels all good and solid nice and straight that's going to direct that water right out the back of the trunk and you're never going to have to worry about it getting inside we'll close this up 
Again, that shuts very easy. And now we'll continue to the passenger side. So the first thing that we kind of notice on the passenger side, of course, you've got your factory fuel cap right here. So again, it's a flip open or pop open. It just kind of opens up right like that. Again, so uh, so iconic of the Mopars there to have that. So again, in the, the, the uh, actual condition of the finish, all in really nice shape. So we'll go ahead and snap that back. And again, you've got those matching RT stripes all the way down the side of the car. You can check out the condition of the wheels and tires on all four corners. They are all very, very nice. Condition of our convertible top, that's in great condition too. So all your seams are all very nice on this top here. Um, there's no rips or tears anywhere. The top is nice and tight on this vehicle. So all of that, uh, all of your edges and so forth all look to be in good shape. Over here now on the passenger side, again, all of your glass, the quarter windows, your side glass, that is all in great shape. No chips or cracks in any of the glass. Again, if we look at our doors here, here to the uh, as far as the elevations and the gaps here again you'll see that just like on the other side very uniform elevations are dead on on the car and again all your body lines all line up the finish on the mirrors as well as the glass and the mirrors on this side all in great shape too so while we're over here let's open up the passenger side that way you get to see the interior all the way around um, nothing to be hidden here again Again, all your seat upholstery, no rips or tears anywhere. All the seat belts are included, both front and back. Uh, all of your carpeting, no rips, tears, fading there. The center console is in great shape too. Um, the finish on it, all very, very nice. And like I said, the dash pad itself, no cracks anywhere there. Uh, again, you'll look at the door panels here before we head outside the car again. Door panels are in really good shape. Um, there's no cracks or no ripping or anything anywhere around the door panels here, all in good shape. Even all of your weather stripping and so forth on both sides all the way around this car not only on the door panels but also down say like your quarter windows there and so forth those rubbers are all nice and soft they all fit very very nice and all seal the car up very very well Again, shuts very easy. We'll come around now towards the front on our way there. We see we do have the fender mount antenna here, the matching Challenger badges here with the RT striping. And again, all you Mopar guys you, and girls, um, you all know that the Pentastar emblem down here only ever goes on the one side, but a lot of people don't know that. So I just do want to point that out. That is correct, only on one side. And then of course we see on hood the 426 hemi badging there if we come around to the front of the car first thing we kind of see here is the bright work the trim all the way around the front end here all of which looks good nice and straight trim here on the leading edge of the hood as far as your bumper goes no scratches no dents or dings in the bumper you've got the bumperettes up here just like you had on the back of the car so that all matches the grill area here in our challenger all intact nothing broke it does have the challenger and the RT badging down here and you can see all the headlights your highs and lows sealed beam units here glass lenses no chips or cracks in any of those bulbs or lenses and then down below You've got your amber lenses down there. Those are all in good shape, no chips or cracks there. And if we look all the way at the bottom, you see the front air dam down there. So that all looks very, very nice. We come up to the hood. You've got the dual scoop hood right here. Uh, again, all nice condition, all the trim work and everything. Of course, the matte black decals here all look to be in good shape. Hood pins on this car. Now again, these aren't the only things that keep the hood down though. It's just kind of a, uh, a thing that uh, a lot of the Mopar guys do or the Mopars did it uh, maybe uh, from the factory. I'm not sure 100% on that. But again, these are kind of secondary. You do have your traditional latch up front 
which we will show you here in just a moment. Uh, and as far as uh, everything else here, the fit and finish on the hood, all looks good. Your gaps all the way around, nice and tight. As far as the windshield itself, no chips or cracks there. And your trim work all the way around, all looks to be in really nice shape here. Um, all securely anchored all the way around. So that all looks good. So uh, I said about opening this hood up. We're going to do that right now. We're gonna go ahead and take the hood pins out. You'll notice it still stays down. Again, like I mentioned, it does have your traditional latch. So you're gonna reach underneath here, pull it to the side, and then the secondary latch, just lift up on the actual lever there to release everything. The underside of the hood, done the same color as the exterior of the car, obviously. And you can see it's got the little rubber flap there on the front end to kind of help seal everything up up here. Again, with the Mopars being the same color in the engine compartment as the rest of the car, that would be correct um, on the car. So again, they kept kind of with that correct theme there, keeping the uh, engine compartment the same color. Uh, and as far as the motor goes, well, here you go. You've got the 426 Hemi. Obviously, you can see the air cleaner up here on top with the Hemi 426 uh, uh, decals here on it. Um, all looks to be in really nice shape. And of course, the other other tall tale sign here that this is in fact a Hemi, well you can just clearly look at the valve covers and see your plug wires that go right down through the center of those valve covers there. Now as far as what we have underneath the uh, air filter there, we've got dual four barrel carburetors. Um, they are both Edelbrock carbs. The primary carburetor, I want to, uh, hopefully I got the numbers right here, but the primary is a 1406 Edelbrock. The secondary carburetor is a 1605 Edelbrock carburetor. Um, those are mounted on top of an Edelbrock aluminum intake there. As far as the ignition goes, it looks like we've got the stock style points ignition here. Uh, plug wires look to be in good shape here. And you even have the, a traditional Mopar coil here on the engine. Like I said, valve covers very, very distinguishable there with the Hemi motors there. All of your heater lines and so forth are all plumbed and sealed up nice and neat under the car here under the hood uh, radiator hoses are all in good shape hose clamps traditional style clamps here and everything is all sealed up very nice again there's no leaks or drips anywhere underneath here as I mentioned earlier it is a power steering car but it is a manual brake car but it does have the disc brakes up front drums on the rear factory style radiator with a complete shroud here uh, also for cooling and for the fan you do have a clutch fan up front here so that's going to engage whenever it needs uh, you know cool down and so forth whenever you're basically um, you know running the car there um, just so it keeps uh, air flowing through the radiator, keeps things nice and cool. Uh, as far as exhaust system on the car, again, a very nice exhaust system, which we will show you here in a little bit from the underside, but we do have long tube headers on this car, two inch uh, pipes on those headers. And then as far as the exhaust system, the rest of it, it is a full three inch exhaust, the X pipe down there. Um, you've got uh, Dynamax turbo style mufflers with three inch tailpipes exiting out through those box tips that we showed you just a little bit ago. And again, with that transmission, 727 torque flight automatic. And then the rear end was the uh, Mopar eight and three quarter. The unit which was called the shore grip and then the 350 gear ratio there so that is a complete walk around on our challenger here 1970 uh, again depending on where you're watching this video from I always uh, you know want to recommend that you go to our website uh, not only do you see the video there you're gonna have upwards of a hundred photos of this car all the way around inside underneath you name it we have it on there for you uh, 
you're going to see all of the uh, the description, the options that's on this car. Um, and again, it's going to answer a lot of your questions that you might have. Uh, also, you're going to see our retail pricing, uh, and that retail pricing does in fact include enclosed shipping to anywhere within the 48 contiguous states, as well as our Hankster's three-month, 3,000-mile powertrain warranty. If that's something that you're interested in, maybe checking out a little bit more of, uh, obviously give us a phone call, text, or email, and we'll be glad to go through that process with you and let you know how you use that if you would ever need to. It's an, actually a very simple process to go through. With that said, we're just going to take a moment right now, close everything up. We're going to get this car back on our lift. We're going to show you the complete underside. And again, it's just as nice as what we've just shown you here. So we'll meet back with you here in just a few moments. All right, folks, welcome back with us here. We are now back in our shop with our 70 challenge here, here up on the lift. We're going to go through this just like we always do. I'm going to go ahead and kind of go over all the components, obviously, that we're seeing from the underside here. And this is mainly so we can check out the condition of everything while we are underneath and show you how good it looks underneath here. So again, at the front of our 70 Challenger, we do have those front air dams here on that front lower balance of the the uh, the nose here uh, again those are uh, they look to be like a fiberglass uh, piece here and they're in good shape um, you know they all look good and solid all the mounting hardware is in them so again they're all good and secure underneath and you can see it's kind of a nice look it's got that it's that split uh, kind of front lower uh, balance there so again looks really good underneath here uh, if we come back on our Mopars here the Challenger has what they call the K member underneath here. Now this is an important part because again all of your suspension basically is going to mount off of that K member and this one is in really good shape. Nice and straight all the way across here on the K member. As far as the front suspension goes we'll go over a brief overview of that here. Um, so again it's just your stock standard OE style control arms tops and bottoms. Now on your Mopars here the Challenger in particular you've got the strut rod front Front suspension so you got the forward facing strut rods on the car you also have the torsion bars that go back here too and those are all in good shape so all of the rubbers all of the bushings and so forth on that stuff all in good shape and everything's nice and straight it also has the front sway bar on the car. And it looks to be maybe like about a three quarter inch front sway bar here. Your bushings at the frame here, as well as your sway bar end links, those are all in really good shape. There's no splits or cracks, none of it's dried out or, or anything like that. So again, that's gonna keep the front end nice and tight on this vehicle. The other thing that's always checked over on these cars are all the ball joints on these uh, control arms. And again, all that stuff's in good condition as well. Uh, steering components on the car, we've got power steering. Um, so again, we can check things like our pitman arm, the drag link, tie rods and tie rod ends. And again, all that stuff's checked out here. Uh, ball joints on your tie rod ends, those are all in good shape too. You can tell everything's been greased and maintained on a regular basis, and it all has the rubber dust boot covers on them to help protect those. Um, as far as braking on this car, now it is a manual brake car, um, but it does have disc brakes up front and it's got the drum brakes out on the rear of the car. As far as the disc brakes up front, this is just gonna be your stock stuff up here. So whenever it comes time to uh, change things out like the pads and the rotors and so forth, should have no problems going to any of your local auto parts stores and picking those items up. Um, as far as uh, drive line we'll kind of move into the center now and we'll start to discuss that as far as the engine and the transmission uh, so again uh, to kind of go over that 426 Hemi and the 727 torque flight automatic transmission. So what we're doing here is we wanna look at the oil pan. We wanna make sure that all of that is all nice and dry underneath the car here as we're looking at it. And it is, your uh, oil pan gaskets, not showing any leaks or drips anywhere around those, nothing at the drain plug, and nothing as we look at the backside here of the pan. 
Now our torque flight transmission, it does in fact have the cover here at the front. So that's gonna help protect that flywheel from any dirt and debris getting in there and possibly chipping a tooth off of your flywheel. Uh, and then this, again, same thing, our transmission pan, we wanna make sure it is nice and dry and it is. There's no drips, no leaks whatsoever. Also, the transmission lines themselves as they come back here, nice and dry, even where they go into the transmission, those are all dry. And again, tail shaft, that's all in good shape. The actual transmission mount, then cross member, all in good condition as well. And lastly, the output shaft seal on the transmission showing no leaks or drips back there where the drive shaft slides into it. Now, before we get too far back here on our car, we wanna go ahead and call out our exhaust system here. So again, we do have the long tube headers. These are two inch long tube headers, so nice big pipes to get all that exhaust out of that 426 Hemi and then it empties into a set of dual three inch exhaust pipes the whole way back through a nice set of Dynamax turbo mufflers and then of course the three inch tailpipes with the box tips and we'll see those as we get back there a little further now as far as the frame sections those all look good the floor itself you can see how nice it is it's really really nice underneath here and again why not i mean it's all painted same color as the body on the top side uh, no patches there's no holes whatsoever everything looks good and solid underneath here including pinch welds and rockers your pinch welds are nice and straight down both sides of the car and the rocker panels are good and solid on both sides there the drive shaft yet another area we pay special attention to because we want to make sure that the universals on both ends of this thing are in good condition no noises um, and that they are functioning properly and and not seized up those are all in good shape they've been checked over as a matter of fact i can see some grease fittings here so again, they're greasable U-joints, so that's gonna help them last a lot longer too. And as far as the rear differential on the car, this is gonna be your Mopar eight and three quarter inch rear. It is the posi unit for the Mopar, or I believe they called that the shore grip rear end there. It does have the 350 gearing in it. Um, so again, it's a good, you know, gear. You're gonna be able to drive this car both, you know, around town and down the highway, no problems whatsoever. As far as the rear suspension, we've got your multi-leaf rear suspension here. Just a typical set of shocks back here, probably a nice gas shock here. Um, all of your bushings, mounting hardware and everything all looks really good back here. No issues there. All of your brake lines are leak free and plumbed all the way back. Again, no leaks. These are drum brakes on the rear of the car. Um, the wheel and tire combination. Now, obviously we got to see a lot better view of that whenever we did our walk around. But again, just to remind you, we do have those Scott Drake legendary uh, the Magnum 500 style wheels, 15 7s up front, 15 8s on the back, and then of course the BF Goodrich Radial TA tires, 225 60 15s on the front, 245 60 15s back here on the rear. So again, you've got all matching tread. BF Goodrich tires are great tires and a very popular tire for on these old classic cars. Uh, again, the rear differential, no leaks or drips anywhere around that third member assembly. That's all good and sealed up. The fuel tank itself looks to be in really good shape. No dents or dings here on this. It looks good. Mounting hardware and straps, all good and solid on this. And as I mentioned there with that exhaust, you do have the three inch tailpipes as well um, with those nice box tips back here. Uh, the rear lower valance itself, nicely painted up here. No dents or dings, no chips or anything back here. That all looks good also underneath here. So that is the complete underside of our 70 Challenger here. Looks really good here. No, uh, no surprises underneath here. It looks great. Um, so 
With that said, uh, just to kind of go over a couple things that we normally get questions about and things that are um, kind of available to you through our website. Uh, obviously, wherever you're watching this from, I would always recommend you go there, hanksters.com. Uh, you'll take a look at this car if you're interested in it. Um, things that we're always asked are shipping and financing. So we'll start with the financing. Um, yes, we can help you out with the financing. We do work very closely with several um, specialty lenders for the classic and collectible muscle cars um, so all you would need to do is go directly to our site to the car you're interested in fill out one of the credit apps there and we can get that over to one of those lenders and see if we can't uh, help you out in that matter and also the shipping on these cars um, we do in fact ship these um, all over the place uh, basically and it's enclosed shipping um, anywhere within in the 48 contiguous states so we can definitely help assist with that um, so yeah so that covers the financing that covers the shipping on the car as well um, so with that said as we always do we're gonna go ahead and lower this car down right now we're gonna go ahead underneath the hood we're gonna fire that 426 Hemi up for you here in just a minute we'll let you hear what that sounds like